right, so the purpose of this video is to go through the 2012 released exam, 10 questions at a time. So any of my students who want to sit down and take 10 minutes to review, they can do that. I've sent out the uh, whole exam and the uh, mobile choice, but I thought what I'd do is I'd put up the question and then you can, um, you can try to answer it, you can pause it, and then you can hear my explanation. All right, a government runs a budget deficit when which of the following occurs in a given year. So a country can either, well, a country has two things. It takes in money through taxes. Taxes are bad for individuals and corporations. They're good for governments. Taxes are income for them. And then the government spends money. And so if it spends less money than it takes in, it's running a surplus. If it spends more than it takes in, it's running a deficit. Now, all the deficits and surpluses together, uh, added together, make up the public debt uh, if it is, in fact, a negative amount. So anyway, which of these is the best answer? The best answer is B. Question uh, two. Remember, there's only two things you can do with your money. You can spend it or save it. And so we, we use the MPC in the MPS to calculate the spending multiplier. So if the government spends extra money, um, if the government increases spending and people get a hold of that extra money, you know, we think we know how much they're going to spend and how much they're going to save. Remember, this is marginal. It's extra money. So you've got all your bills paid. And so a little definition there of mar what marginal means. So any, if you have a, if you have a high MPC, which means people spend most of them extra money they get, they must have E. A low marginal propensity to save. So now uh, this is the 2012 exam. I started teaching uh, macro in 2014-2015. Um, all right, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm giving you the wrong definition there. The, uh, there's several functions of money. There's types of money and there's functions of money. One of them is store of value, one of them is unit of account, one of them is medium exchange. And so the transaction demand for money, that means you need money so you can spend it. Like, for instance, if you're going to go uh, out on the town and you're going to spend money a bunch of places, you're going to need some cash with you. Although money here doesn't necessarily refer to cash. It refers to M1. Anyway, I digress. Uh, it's The answer is D. It's closely associated with the medium of exchange. Remember, back in ancient and ancient. Back in colonial America, people used bushels of tobacco for money. And I'm sure tobacco was worth a lot of money, but who carries around a bushel of tobacco? Uh, so um, we use coins and bills because they're easy to put in your pocket or your purse. And that is the function of the medium of exchange. Uh, so there's three types of economies. There's the market economy where the market makes most or all the decisions. There's a mixed economy, which is what most countries have, which is what the United States has. And then there's a command economy. They're not going to use the word communist or socialist on this exam. It's too politically charged. But unlike a market economy, a command economy uses a more centralized planning. And when I taught this in class, I, sh you know, I always show the uh, Winn-Dixie cereal aisle as an example of a market economy. If you want to buy it, somebody will make it. So uh, I probably should have the two 4x graphs here. But if you remember my story or my analogy of the 4x island, uh, people can't come to this country and spend their currency, right? Uh, and so what they have to do is they have to, if they're coming from Japan and they have the yen, they've got to go to this island, this fictitious island, and exchange it. And what they do uh, is they throw their money down and pick our money up. That's if they're coming here on vacation. They also need to do that as well if they're buying our exports. And so the value of a country's currency will tend to appreciate if, A, the demand for the country's exports increases. Uh, a country's standard of living, obviously we have wealth inequity in this country. That's a pretty big political issue now, uh, wealth inequality. But a rough measure, a very crude measure, blunt measure of how much people have as you take the amount of GDP made in that country and divide it by the population. The best GDP is GDP adjusted for inflation, 
And the best way to measure a country's wealth is not total GDP, it's GDP divided by population. And that is real GDP, real per capita GDP. A is the answer. Hyperinflation, I thought this was an interesting question. Hyperinflation is usually caused by people printing more money. But the more money you have, the less it's worth. Okay, and that's what happened in Nazi Germany and Zimbabwe and Venezuela and a whole bunch of places. And so they don't have the printing money option here. So the best example is, and this is where I should have a money market graph, but if you keep the money supply large, then interest rates go down. Uh, but what happens is that devaluates, that devalues your money. Anyway, um, the best answer for seven is B. Um, you know, the government is running too many, um, you know, they're, the government's spending more money than it brings in, which is what it does all the time, especially now. And so what the government does to keep interest rates low, they keep expanding the money supply. But when they expand the money supply, money becomes worth less, which leads to inflation. Now, <clears throat> this is what I was going to say earlier. I started t teaching in 2015. In 2015, I, uh, we didn't have this. We haven't ever had this thing called the investment demand curve. So I've seen old exams. This is the 2012 exam where it was a big deal. So I don't think question eight will be there. But let's just change it around and say, what will shift the demand for investments? Now, uh, these are business investments, which are called capital equipment. And uh, basically, if the government tells businesses that they have to spend, you know, get, you know, if they reduce their income tax rate, They'll spend more money on equipment. Uh, if the new equipment coming out is quicker and better and, you know, more productive and it'll in increase the company's bottom line, they'll buy more of it. Looking down at the bottom, if real GDP goes up, that means the economy is growing. People are spending money and businesses want to get in on that. They will, in, you know, buy more capital equipment. If companies D make more money, they will uh, spend it on corporate equipment to, you know, enhance the, the stockholders, you know, the stock's value. The only thing on here that would hurt investment demand is an increase in the real interest rate, which is the one that's on the loanable funds graph. All right, so there's three types of unemployment. But remember, you, to be unemployed, you have to be looking for work. And so the thing about the unemployment rate, it is really illusory because people who have, like, say you're a lawyer, when I graduated from college in 1982, we were in this huge recession, and there were lawyers getting jobs as bartenders. Are they, un are they unemployed? No, but they are underemployed. And, and so the employment rate or the unemployment rate does not take that into account. The other thing it doesn't take into account, people who've been out of work so long, they just quit looking. And so the answer to number nine is B. And number 10, I thought I would show you a couple of graphs on this one because I'm only going through 10 questions here uh, in this video. So uh, if aggregate supply is reduced, now that is a shift to the left. Okay, so before I show you the graph, um, that is a shift to the left and aggregate price level goes up and GDP goes down. But this thing says what happens if you have a reduction in aggregate supply and then an increase in aggregate demand. Aggregate demand. Aggregate demand going up all by itself is an increase in aggregate price level and an increase in GDP. So I thought I'd throw some graphs here. Sorry, this is so low budget. But anyway, I graphed it out. You guys really need to practice with these graphs and you need to label them right. So here's economy in long and short run equilibrium. We're at point A. And then the first shift happens. There's a reduction in aggregate supply. And that is a shift to the left. As I've said, that is a lose-lose that leads to this thing called stagflation, which we'll talk about later. But if you'll notice, uh, and I forgot to change the PLE and the QE. Um, I'll fix that on the next one. <clears throat> I'm drawing on these little boards and taking pictures. It's low, it's low budget and low tech. Uh, but obviously, price level has gone up and GDP has gone down, as I said. And then here is the uh, other movement. I know this is sloppy, but now aggregate demand goes up. So we went from A to B, and now we're going up to C. And so price level goes up, and real GDP 
at that point goes up. But the only thing that is sure to happen to answer the question is that price level will increase. So D is the answer. I hope you enjoyed this. We're going to stop.